anybody have any questions on that? Um, who was your biggest musical influence growing up? Like, a well, band um, or a singer or <clears throat> any artist? Well, in the beginning, I would have to, say, have to say my biggest music influence in the beginning was Quincy Jones. Um, I mean, everything from Frank Sinatra to Michael Jackson. You know, I think even then, early on, I knew that he was probably one of the you know, somebody, I mean, back, back then I didn't play bass, so yeah, I'd have to say Quincy Jones was probably one of my biggest influence. And then Prince, of course, unless he plays like every instrument in the world. You know, Larry Grant and, you know, um, Lucy Collins and stuff like that. I grew up with a lot of funk and, you know, R&B and hip hop and stuff like that. So, anybody Was there like a, a certain time where you uh, understood that this is what you wanted to do with your life? Yeah, you know, from the beginning, I think, man. I mean, I've been touring since I was 14 years old. So, so like, as soon as I got a drum bugle for it, that's all we did was tour, especially during the summer. We were gone for like three months out of the year. But, um, you know, during the summertime. But um, I think in the beginning, man, I just kind of, just something that was, it came easy for me. You know, I just, I've always loved it, man. Cause, you know, I used to sit around for hours and just listen to music. How many bass players in the house, man? Actually, so. I don't know. I think everybody else is guitar players, or what? Yeah. Well, both, huh? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Anybody else? What's up, Chris? Uh, tell us, what's in your CD changer right now in your car? What's your weapon? What's your weapon in the last couple weeks? What's in the off right now? Oh wow! Um, yeah, uh, you know what? Um, I'm, yeah, I have. This is pretty weird. I have at the drive-in. Um, I have uh, Steely Dan. I think it is. Yeah, Asia. <laughs> and um, I got some uh, instructional like losing weight CDs. <laughs> so I'm trying to get my, I'm trying to keep my chub down because I got uh, a photo shoot in about four weeks. <laughs> And um, various like jazz stuff too. Jill Scott, I think. Chris is familiar with her. Great album, by the way, bro. <laughs> there was somebody else over here. Who would you like to work with in the future? Have, you personally are. Oh wow, who I like to work with in the future? Hmm. Wow, that's a big list, bro. Um, you know, um, it'd be great to work with um, Prince on some stuff. That kind of old school way, and I was like, Prince, that's Prince. I like to work with Prince and stuff, man. And I like to just pick his brain, I think, you know. Why is he so weird, man? Why is he wear <laughs> outfits with the boots? <laughs> huh? Yeah, why, 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 why does he wear outfits with the boots on him? Seriously. Yes, you do, boy. Yeah. Um, how do you see the writing process for you and you go? Um, you know, there is, man. I mean, um, Sometimes one person may come with a whole song. My lead singer's coming in with Sonny's coming with a whole song before I'm just kind of deal for a minute. Sometimes it's just pieces and parts. You know, um, it's random. You know, there's no one person that really writes all the music all the time. I mean, I think that that's, that's what's really helped. Um, the music, I think, really um, works so well because I think it's definitely a mixture of everybody's influences. It's like I don't really, you know, I tell the story all the time, but when I got with POD, I never listened to rock music. If somebody had told me 20 years ago, 15 years ago, I was going to play in a rock band, I would have told them they were high. Because I, I didn't play, I didn't play rock music. So my, my um, where I, where I pull from, when I play bass with my band, I don't have rock bass players to pull from. You know, so I play like a person who's an R&B player would play bass. I mean, you know, the, the, a really distinctive thing that really sticks out in my mind. I remember the first time I played with him, the very first rehearsal we had, I remember Marco stopping and Will stopping and simultaneously they looked at me and said, man, sounds great, man, but there's too many notes in it, man. Your point is just too much stuff, so I kind of had to really kind of scale down, you know, that playing, but I think in the long run it's made me a better songwriter because really when it gets down to it, it's all about the song. So, that process is very, Random. What are your favorite print songs? Hmm. Um, there's a lot of them there. <laughs> um, Have you ever learned any of them? I learned some of them man, back in the day. I mean, all of Purple Rain, I thought was pretty hot, but I like 
tambourine. Um, what do you like? What is that? <laughs> you know, tambourine. Most people I say, like, oh, what's wrong with that? <laughs> um, yeah, go ahead. What does POD stand for? It stands for Payable on Death. <laughs> I know, what does Payable on Death mean? Um, for those of you that don't know, our um, band is very spiritually Christian, and our influences are spiritual. So when we got together as a band, we went to, you know, kind of come up with a name that was tough. You know, back in the day, as you understand, this is back in the early 90s when there were bands like Metallica and, you know, or one name bands. So we wanted something that was actually longer. So we came up with Pamela on Death, and it means, you know, through Jesus' death, our sins have been paid for. So. Yeah. How was it St. Augustine? I, mean, I know you guys would be were in there, but how did you get How was the reaction you guys think about it? Yeah, the the reaction was excellent. The, the, the reaction was actually pretty cool, man. Um, I expected it to be a lot more intense. I mean, our first year playing, I remember um, we had this banner, and it was a huge, like, 80 foot dreadlock Jesus. That it looked like. I don't know if you guys know what call it Ozzy. But on, to the right and to the left of that banner was all Ozzy's, um, um, you know, all his, um, his stage stuff, man. He had that, it was a gargoyle head, and demons all over the place. He had this big, huge devil cheer that had horns sticking out of it and fire. And it was just weird, man. I'm like, you know, I remember just looking back and we had pictures of it and just seeing all Ozzy stuff around and all these people. And it was, it, the reception was pretty good, man. I think people, you know, well, it gets down to it, man. I mean, I think POD has always been about that. We've never been afraid to be who we are. So I think people just accept us for being who we are. Of course, you got people out there, haters, but, you know, it's just the name of the game, man. Some people don't like you, some people ain't. So. Do you think music theory is important in the right song? Um, yeah. I do think it's important. Um, I think um, it's an important part of it. I think a good songwriter can... Um, can mix the two. You know, he put both of them together. Because, I mean, I've heard some songs that are too theoretical. I mean, it's too much. Where the average person is going to lose, lose you. But I think a lot of it depends also what it is that you're trying to do. If you, you, know, you want to be Dream Theater, be Dream Theater. And I think that's cool. But if you want to be Beatles, you know, or Rolling Stones or somebody like that, I mean, you're going to have to take a, a, a slightly different approach. For me, I think a great song is a great song. I don't care how it's written, this song is a great song. <laughs> But I think theory is definitely important for me. I, I know where I'm going because I, you know, I play guitar, I play drums too, but, you know, playing saxophone, I know all the scales and I know everything from bass. But if you were to put bass paperwork, I mean, like, you know, notes in front of me, I could, I could probably fumble through it a little bit because there's a little similarity between the bass and trumpet stuff. But, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what can we expect on a new album? Um, well, I mean, you know, um, I was uh, talking, actually had it, talking to a man over here about that earlier today. Um, you know, uh, I think um, as a band, we've always <coughs> not necessarily tried to experiment, but I think when you get an album, especially from us, I mean, it's where we're at at that particular time. I think us being musicians and us being a band, we all, we're, when you write songs, you're actually giving people a piece of your life and um, kind of like an inside look at, you know, what's happening in your, in your world, so to speak. You know, and um, this album, I think, is very emotional, it's very passionate. Having Marcos back in the band, our original guitar player, has definitely sparked a lot of, um, just um, good memories, man, of you know what we started out together 15 years ago. So um, from this album, I would say this, you know, definitely very melodic, like it's always been. Um, we've always tried to, you know, be very versatile in the music and not really have boundaries, man. So I mean, I, I love the music that's coming out right now. I wish I could let some people listen to it, but it's kind of kind of locked key right now. So that's gonna be amazing. Man. We put a lot into it, so hope you guys enjoy it.